Hi, it's Kid with SVJader. In this tutorial, I will explain the step animations and how you can easily make the hands of a watch jump from mark to mark without using a lot of keyframes. So, let's begin. I will select the second hand here and place the origin point right in the center of the dial. Zoom in. Now make sure you center it perfectly on the center of this little circle. Okay, that's good. So now I want the second hand to go to the fifth second. So that means I have to set the timeline duration for at least five seconds. Here we go. And now add the rotate animator. Drag the playhead to the fifth second and rotate the second hand to indicate 5 seconds on the watch. There. And now we have this simple animation of the hand rotating with a linear transition. Looks good. But what I actually want to do is to give that ticking feeling of a classic analog watch. What I don't need is this linear transition here. So I'm going to select the animator here and open the easing panel. From here I'm going to use the step function. The step function consists of step start or step end, and here is the difference between the two. Step start will take effect when the playhead reaches the first keyframe. In this case, right when I hit play, because the keyframe is at zero seconds. So as you can see, the hand jumped to the five second mark on the watch without any transition. Now let me show you the step end, which will do the same, but only when the playhead will reach the end keyframe. Let's hit play. And yet nothing happens so far in this five seconds. The jump will happen right at the end, here. So basically, this is how the principle of the step animations work. And there is one more thing left to show. To create that ticking effect, I need the hand to jump through each second mark here. And for that, the first solution you'd think is to manually place keyframes on each second on the timeline, right? But luckily, there is a quicker and simpler way to do that. Back in the easing panel, you can set the number of steps right here. And you can also see the graphic representation here. So I'll type in five steps, and it will be one step for each second. You can see how the graph changed, showing the steps we have on this step animation. Now when I hit play, this is what happens. You see how the second arm now rotates, jumping through the five steps to its final position. Now let's also try the step start. Set up the steps to five. Notice that every time I customize a timing function, it will save and appear here. You can see that my custom step end I just used before is also here. So now, with the step start, you'll see that the second arm will start animating right when I hit play. Of course, you can make this go all the way around by setting the timeline to 60 seconds, rotate the hand a full 360 degrees, and also use 60 steps. And meanwhile, the minute hand could also rotate to indicate one minute on the watch. To save both you and I time, I'm not going to do that today, but I'm sure you get the idea. Instead, I'm going to finish the animation another way. I'll hide the second hand and will animate the other two. I'll adjust the origin for the minute hand. I'll place it just as I did for the seconds hand in the center of the dial. And also, I'll repeat that for the hour hand as well. There. Now, back at the zero second. I will add the rotate animator for both of the hands. And before starting, I will set my timeline to 12 seconds. I'm just going to zoom out on the timeline a little bit so we can fit all 12 seconds into the view. Drag the playhead to the end. And now I will animate the minute hand to go around 12 times. Of course it will go very fast. It's going to simulate 12 hours in 12 seconds. So at the rotate properties, I will type in 12 turns. And now let's take a quick peek. Just so you know, I'm holding shift while I drag the playhead on the timeline. 
I'm going to keep the linear transition on the minute hand and go ahead and go to the hour hand and animate it as well. At the 12th second, I will type in one turn to make the hand go around once. This time I will use a step end animation to make the hour hand jump an hour mark every time the minute hand completes a turn. I'm going to actually use the custom step end that I used for the second hand and only modify the step count. I'm going to need 12 steps here. Oh, and also set the animation to infinite. Okay, let's go to the preview. So this is how the animation looks with an infinite loop and having the hour hand jumping to the next hour mark of the watch every time the minute hand gets back to the 12th hour mark. Step animation also works for every single animator available in the list, so you can try it out on different animations. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.